Okay, in looking at the small surroundings that you see in front of us right now, I don't want you to freak out and think that you're gonna have to go out and buy everything all at once. This is not the point of showing you the various tools. Granted, you probably know all the tools that are surrounding me right now. Uh, common sense says you've seen at least most of them in your lifetime. But for those of you who do not, maybe there are some of you out there that don't know a rake from a shovel or a square head shovel from a pointed shovel. That's why we have to go through this. Just for the sake of completion, if nothing else. A basic assortment of tools for a homeowner is going to be shovels on my right and rakes on my left. Uh, but with some of the applications you're gonna be learning in the backyard project or front yard project, whichever one you're doing, you're not gonna be able to use just any shovel and you're not gonna be able to use just any rake. Each one has kind of a specific purpose, you know, to apply to your project. So let's get started. I'm not gonna dwell on a lot of this. I'm gonna go through them kind of quickly and then we'll talk a little bit about maintenance equipment which you will need later on and you'll see in your bonus module, okay? So let's start with my right on with shovels. Shovels are <laughs> almost, you would think, a, a, a staple diet of landscaping. And you'll notice that a lot of the tools that are surrounding here aren't brand new. Now, I did not want to use brand new tools to show you because these are the ones that I've been making a living with for many years. And I've gone through several of them over the years from employees breaking them to trucks running over them, etc. So none of these are new tools, which I thought you might appreciate because they only stay new until they go in the ground one time. When we talk about um, your first assignment, remember, in your first assignment in module one, I said, don't, don't go off and be a weekend warrior. All I want you to do is go out and eliminate the weeds by spraying them or hoe on them. And I'm gonna start with that right here. This is a device, what we call a hula hoe. It came out decades ago. And although some people still like the bladed hoe, this one I like because you can, you can slide it back and forth across the, the ground and not have to dig into the ground very far. Uh, it takes stuff off very easily and it's almost self-sharpening. It, it, I have never sharpened this in probably the 10 years that I've had it and it's very easy to go through and knock down not only small and medium-sized weeds but you can even attack larger weeds as well. So the hula hoe is probably one of the first things I would suggest you attain or borrow and do your first assignment. Get out there and knock down all the unnecessary all the unnecessary weeds before we go off into module number two. Once we get things starting to be under control, um, you, you've, got the, you've got the race 50% won already. All right, when the old adage of time to put the shovel in the ground takes place, there's probably gonna be three that you're gonna wanna have on hand. <clears throat> First one is a square head shovel, perfect for scooping. Scooping and moving dirt off of a firmer surface underneath where the dirt is at. Also moving gravel, sand, compost, uh, bark, other things like that. It's meant for scooping. It is not very good for digging. Uh, it just doesn't have the, the layout for digging. Unless you live in some places that are almost sandy beach, and there are some places, there's one town south of me here called Manteca, where if it's wet, you can literally dig in the ground with this. But for the most part, it's used for scooping. So, square head shovel. The all important pointed, pointed or round head shovel. Probably the most universal tool that has ever been invented, I think. <laughs> uh, great for planting plants, planting trees. Uh, you can also use it to move material, uh, but mostly it's used for digging. But the one thing it cannot do is it cannot clean a trench. Not unless you have a 10 inch trench, because you can look at the, the width of that. That's not gonna fit into your standard trencher trench. And that's where we go to our third option as far as shovels, and that is the standard four inch trenching shovel. Um, I use this for two purposes. I use it for cleaning out trenches so that I can put in irrigation, drainage, um, electrical line, stuff like that, which you'll learn later on. Uh, but I also use it 
the four inch one and the six inch one, I use it for planting plants as well because it has a very smaller profile. It's easier to get in the ground sometimes than the, the larger uh, round head shovel and it works really good. But it's very good to have on hand, especially in the beginning, uh, to clean out trenches and that's its primary focus. Okay, that's all we have to worry about as far as tools go in the form of shovels. Now, digging, we'll stay with the digging theme for just a second, and that is the Pickmatic. The Pickmatic uh, is a tool that I have used repeatedly over decades, and mainly, mainly to either fine tune slope in trenches, uh, to carve out parts of the landscape that needs to be leveled, like a sloped yard where you need to put a patio. Uh, but more than anything, I've used it to remove existing plant material uh, in an existing landscape that has to be modified. Uh, I keep the back, the mattock part of it, very, very sharp, and it goes into the ground uh, very fast with a, with a good swing. It can go in and go through root systems very quickly. <clears throat> and if you hit the root system three or four different ways and start prying up on the pick, uh, you, can remove, you can remove plants very, very simply. Because you have to remember that residential landscapes, uh, for the most part, are top irrigated. Uh, unless you have, you know, a tree that you're gonna remove. <clears throat> if you have a shrub that is three feet or less, you can cut that shrub down near the ground and then introduce the Pickmatic in and around that root system and pop it out of the ground very easily. So, Pickmatic, also a very, very useful tool. Let's move over to rakes. The steel tined rake is basically a, a tool for, you can clean stuff with it, but its primary purpose is grading and moving material. Grading out gravel, grading out dirt, uh, filling in trenches by raking the dirt back into the trench. Um, a, a useful tool and a sturdy tool. You would not want to take on those particular applications with something like this, which is a, a flexible tine rake. This one here is for cleaning up fall leaves and debris uh, and really nothing more. It doesn't have the strength and tenacity that a steel tine rake does, and you can you can see why. This is made to flex, and it's made to clean up leaves off lawns in gardens. And if you use it properly, especially if you've mulched your beds, if you use it with just the weight of the rake and very little weight, you won't pick up all your bark and throw it away the first season that you have fall leaf drop. But these two are probably the two staple rakes that I would have in my garage or shed as a new homeowner. The next rake is something you can rent because you probably will not be using it beyond your project. Uh, this is a leveling rake. It's a very wide bladed tined rake. It has two sides on it. It has the steel tine for dragging and moving material and then it has the bladed side on it for actually leveling and smoothing out areas. What do we use this for? In your project, you're gonna do it to create a nice smooth surface for like your new sod lawn, if you're putting one in. Uh, if you are putting down a sand base for a paver patio or a flagstone patio or walkway, that would be for your bladed side. But if you're doing to move, if you're doing it to move material, then you're gonna use your steel tine side. And it just gets through, it gets through the material and the product a lot faster than say the steel tine rake. You know, you've doubled your capacity of pulling. And this is something that, uh, this was the original one that I used many, many years ago in my contracting years. Uh, and this one here is probably close to 23 years old now. Still working fine, but all the colors worn off as you can see. So steel tine rake, you can rent these at uh, a, dec a decent, rental company you can find hand tools especially this one uh, i don't suggest going to the box stores and buying one using it and taking it back they kind of frown on used stuff so those are the rakes there are a couple other ones there's a, a mini leveling rake that are out there uh, if you have a very small lawn 
um, they have them in half that size and I have one in the trailer but we're not going to bring it out it's just a smaller one and they're available to buy now let's talk about just a little bit I think we've covered everything I'm going to go over really quick um, maintenance equipment and when I say maintenance equipment I'm talking about after you have put in your yard and a first season or so has gone by and maybe you need to nip and tuck stuff to keep it in good order and maybe deadheading deadheading plants from flowers and that kind of stuff that's where we're going to get into some of the maintenance equipment and two of the staple ones you probably recognize these as a head shear head shears are very simple easy to understand clippable the best thing is is to keep it lubricated and occasionally have the blade filed sharp because a dull one will just work your shoulders and your chest and other things to death and it's not good for the plant it's much easier for the plant to be sheared quickly than to have it sit there and shredded more or less with a dull pair of head shears if you have an existing yard and you're going to be taking things out as a result of your your new home purchase something that would be interesting to have and useful to have is lopping shears Lopping shears are great for pruning up the smaller trees that are in the landscape, uh, pruning up larger shrubs that you may want to keep, but you want to kind of make pretty again. Uh, or if you're taking them out, you can trim them all the way down to the ground and then use that pickmatic again to bust through the roots and pull the whole thing out. Uh, it's a lot easier, but its twin cousin is the pruning saw. Uh, you can see the gnarly teeth profile on that and it is meant for pruning or removal. Uh, many of the trees here at Weed Patch Ranch we have done with this and this alone. We have over 90 olive trees here on the property and every winter I have to go in and prune. And these are the two workhorses right here. That along with the rakes. And they've done very, very well. But as far as pruning, these are your two your two workhorses. Lastly, something that's generally on my hip everywhere I go around the ranch, and that is a decent pair of just handheld pruning shears. And these are great for, say for instance, you have a container garden and you have a, a, a small perennial that has come and gone in its bloom. Something like this where you want to cut it back and let it flush back out for a second bloom or a third bloom or a fourth bloom. These are your guys. Uh, you can use things like kitchen shears and that kind of stuff, but you know, right tool for the job. And you can find these at box stores and, and hardware stores as well. But uh, this particular brand is Corona, and this one here is probably about 18 years old and has done very well. Once a year I put a, a good edge on it again, and it has a little scabbard. You can buy the scabbard separately, or sometimes they come in a kit. So handheld pruning shears. No. We're gonna go back over these last remaining tools uh, later on in module 11 when we talk about maintenance. We'll revisit some of those tools that I've already shown you, but your typical power lawnmower, which uh, nowadays if I had a smaller yard, not one as large as Weed Patch Ranch here where I'm mowing over 8,000 square feet of lawn every week, uh, I would probably go to some of the, the nice electric rechargeable battery type of mowers if I had a small lawn. I, I've used them. I've seen them at my customers uh, yards and they're a fantastic piece of equipment. They've come a long long ways from the ones that used to be out about 10 to 15 years ago. Uh, so I encourage you, you know, go green type of thing um, and try that. But if you have a larger yard, say like uh, 3,000 square feet of lawn that you're putting in or more, then probably a power mower is probably the way to go. Uh, it'll probably, you know, mow the lawn over the course of two weeks with a gas tank, and it has a little more power. Uh, so the standard power mower is a is just a staple diet as far as lawn care out there, and you can use, although it's not necessary, you can use the power string trimmer as well. If you decide to go in power mode, you can do it with hand edgers, you can do it with the old roller teeth type of edger, or you can get a gas bladed edger, however you want to do it. 
Uh, for around here, I use this because I not only use it on edging the lawns, but I also use it for knocking down part of the hay field next door, uh, weeding in and around the orchard where the berry vines are, etc. And the time savings is obvious when you're using something like that. So a string trimmer, this one happens to be Husqvarna, and again you can tell it's not <laughs> brand new. It's been a workhorse for over seven years. Um, lastly, and something for your new project or existing project, and that is a, a decent sturdy wheelbarrow. Uh, there's a couple different kinds out there. Uh, there's the really small, what I used to call, because my grandmother had one, was a grandma barrel. And she had that little shallow tray one with a little, little hard, uh, I forget the name of the wheel, but the wheel that was on the front of it. And it was the size that grandma, who was all of 4'11", could handle. Uh, the three cubic foot one is uh, probably the standard. It's the, the usual in a project, and it's going to be used for a couple of three things. Number one, if you're doing any, any demolition, you got to get it from point A to point B, at least the debris. You got to throw it in a dumpster. You have to uh, uh, put it in the back of a pickup or put it in a dump trailer or something and get it off the site. And oftentimes we're filling up wheelbarrows. Then it's the opposite effect. Now you're going to have things dumped out at your street or in your driveway and you're going to have to get stuff if you're doing the front yard or backyard, get it from point A back to point B and into the project. So gravels, uh, compost, sand, uh, soil conditioners, plant material. Obviously all of this is going to be used through the workhorse of a three cubic foot wheelbarrow. And if you want to go big or go home, then you can also go up to the, the larger Jackson dual wheeled six cubic foot monsters. And that's great if you're uh, a big person. Uh, I don't suggest it if you're like my wife, smaller in stature, uh, because if you're filling it up with gravel and that kind of stuff, you can only move so much under human power. So remember, we're gonna work smarter, not harder. And every day, I do not wanna hear about people having ice packs all over their backs, their arms, their elbows, their knees, etc., because they've overdone it. So remember, stay within your means and use something that fits you. Uh, these can also be rented. Uh, however, if you're gonna be a homeowner for any length of time, you might as well have one. And it's, it's a good investment. So down and dirty that is your basic tools for your landscape project my wife has given me a high sign and there's one more thing <laughs> in our next in our next module you are going to learn how to use marking paint and a lot of it you'll see it in module number two and you'll see it in a later module and it is um, something that I learned to use a long time ago. And I give a shout out to uh, a man that's been in the landscape business longer than I have, and that's a, a guy by the name of Gary Allen uh, from Designers Landscape. He was on TV for several years, and now he's still on YouTube. And he basically, by me watching him on television, taught me how to use this. And it is invaluable as far as trying to create a picture for you or your family when we lay stuff out, when we mark plants for coming out of the ground, um, layouts for patios, where the trees are supposed to go, where the irrigation is supposed to go. And this is the upside down type where you're, you're taking and you're turning it that way. I like using it through the wand because why? I'm six foot two and I don't wanna have to bend all the way over every time I mark ground. So I can use it here and it's much easier to use standing up than it is bending over. And after eight hours of being bent over, no pun intended, um, the wand works a lot better. So, marking paint. <laughs> you know, just when you think you have the perfect plan, uh, oftentimes it does not. But when things are out of sight, sometimes they're out of mind. So one of the very most important things that I forgot to tell you are these work gloves. Find yourself a good pair of either neoprene, uh, rubberized, or leather gloves. You will thank me 10 times because you're talking to a guy who has often done it so many times without gloves and ask my wife, she's put the band-aids and the curlex and everything all over my body. 
uh, from hurting myself off and on over many, many years. But uh, a good pair of gloves, especially when you're first starting out, you've got those newbie hands, uh, you don't have calluses or anything else, and you will get some blisters. So protect your hands, ladies, protect your nails, and uh, work safely, okay? So a good pair of work gloves, thanks.